Good day fellow investors, today we're going to go short a few stocks. We have Tattooed, Chef, Recent Plant-Based, Food, Stock that has a questionable business model and an extreme valuation. Similarly, Basic Fit is a Dutch company that has a questionable business model and some accounting shenanigans going on. Oatly, another plant-based food that has again questionable accounting but also an extreme valuation at 11 billion market capitalization. And then we can also discuss Tesla, which is a company you should never go short. In this video I want to explain the mechanics of going short, discussing a little bit what short squeezes can do to a short strategy, explain the risk and reward of going short and how if one must go short, if the opportunity is that incredible, how to do that with the lowest risk and how highest reward possible way. If you like this educational video that is part of my free stock market investing course, crash that like button. So let's start with the mechanics of going short. Let's say you are a long-term investor and you hold the stock of Apple. You as a long-term investor can lend your shares to the short seller for a fee plus dividend payments. Lending shares that short sellers borrow to later sell on the stock market and return to you at hopefully a lower price is what your broker does for you. If you have those cheap brokers, you allow them to lend your shares to short sellers and that's how they make money and that's how they afford those low or no trading fees. At least one part of the business model is that way. If you have a brokerage account with an investment bank, you will get offers. You can lend your shares at a 7% yield for lending them over time until the short seller doesn't return your stocks to you. He has to pay you the fee, the interest rate for lending and the dividends. Then when the short seller gets his shares, he sells those on the stock market with the hope of returning them at the lower price. If the stock crashes, he buys back the stock at a lower price, pays the fees returns the stock and banks the profit. However, if the stock rises, he has to buy back higher, return the stock at a higher price and lose the money, the differential, plus pay the fees and dividends. So the thing when it comes to going short is that the upside is limited. For example, if we go short Apple at 148, we sell it on the market and then for some reason it goes to zero, which is impossible, but okay, just for an example, then we have made $148.17 minus fees and dividends. So that would be the case of shorting. So the maximum upside is 100% as we can get what we have received when we sold the stock. And that's about it. However, if shit hits the fan, like a Reddit crowd attacks your short, then a lot can be lost. Actually, the losses are unlimited. And we have seen this situation recently with GameStop, AMC, where some big hedge funds lost 50% in one month. But these short squeezes, when shorts are forced to cover, are not something new. It has been happening all over time, from the silver short squeeze cornering the market to Volkswagen that in 2008 at one point in time was the most expensive company in the world with a market capitalization of 420 billion due to a short squeeze. And if we go back to our Apple stock, let's say we short it now and then it goes 10x to 1480. The 9x difference between what we got to short it now and what we have to pay if it goes 10x 
is presenting an unlimited loss. Those that went short, let's say Apple here, and are still short, have to pay 10 times what they received when they went short. This means that going short has unlimited risks and limited upside to 100% because you can't make more than what you have short. Plus there are some other risks when it comes to going short. Over the long term the trend for stocks, businesses, economies is that stocks always go up. There are periods when stocks don't go up but Usually, over time, stocks have returned 10% over a year in the S&P 500 case. So when you're going short, you're betting up against the stock market general fundamental trend of earnings growth, of business growth, and perhaps even more important on inflation growth. Because if you look at the purchasing power of the dollar, it is designed to decline all the time. And as this purchasing power declines, stocks that represent businesses go up, which is another negative for going short. So when it comes to shorting, there are many forces you must outsmart to make money. The direction of stock markets. You must really know those stocks that will go down in a short period of time for whatever reason. We'll discuss that a little bit later with the examples. You must be therefore really good at timing the markets because opening and holding a short position is not free. Be it with stock options, be it just borrowing stocks and selling them. The upside is limited while the downside is unlimited. So that's another difficulty when it comes to the stock market and the crowd on Reddit can make you go bust, especially if you publicize your stock. Like short seller Citron that has made some great short analysis, decided not to publish them anymore because Reddit people would read it, pump the stock price up, force him to cover his short, create a short squeeze, and therefore his business model went out of the window. All right, let's discuss a few examples. I recently discussed TTCF stock in a video as I'm doing an analysis on the plant-based food sector, and I also did BYND. You can check my video, the link to all the videos that I mentioned will be in the description of this video below. And Tattooed Chef is a SPAC that went public in October of 2020. And since then the stock didn't do really well, but still the market capitalization is 1.6 billion. The revenues are what 250 million, so it is a crazy valuation with a price to sales ratio of 9.52. And my concerns are that the company is not profitable now, it's unlikely it will ever be profitable because of the huge cost to compete into the frozen food market which means they are just pumping their, their growth by using the money from the SPAC IPO without thinking about reaching long-term profitability. The likely outcome is that the company will be sold to a bigger brand and that's usually at 10, 11 times EBITDA if they ever reach profitability with EBITDA. This is the same destiny that the company similar to this one, the vegetarian butcher in the Netherlands was recently acquired by Unilever. So at 10 times EBITDA, even if they reach 1 billion in sales and have EBITDA of 100 million, that's a price of 1 billion, which in the best case scenario for this company most likely represents a downside of 30% on the current stock level. The next stock short idea I have is Basic Fit. It's a Dutch gym company expanding in the Benelux, France and Spain. The stock is really a growth stock as it expands fast. Then we had the COVID gym crash scare and this shows the riskiness of the business model. There is absolutely nothing behind it. So when the COVID crisis hit, the market sold off 65% down and now the stock recovered but I'm still very very wary of the business model and of the accounting shenanigans going on there. Look at this. They 
make it look like everything is amazing. So revenues go up, clubs go up, profitability goes up as they scale, but this is underlying EBITDA. EBITDA called by Charlie Munger as manure earnings, as I'm not allowed to say the bull thing coming out of the bull because of YouTube policies. And if you look at revenues, yes, there has been staggering growth. And you can read more about this on my blog. I'm analyzing the complete Dutch stock market. So there is more detail. Look at the great growth, but look at the profitability. The best profitable year was 18 million. Compare that to the market capitalization, that's a price earnings ratio of 123. That's an insane price earnings ratio. Plus, the cash flows are negative, negative, negative because they are burning money to grow. But how come they show everything so profitable? Because they are using wrong metrics or they are showing metrics on purpose to satisfy the customer, the investor. Their target is for return on invested capital of 30% on their new gyms. However, they calculate it by using EBITDA. If we look at Investopedia, you compute return on invested capital by using net operating profit after tax divided by invested capital. And here come the shenanigans. In the EBITDA, they have a big account on depreciation that includes lease costs. When you rent something to put a gym into, for me, that's a cost. But with leasing, it's a different name for renting, you can put that as rights to use assets and then depreciate it over time. And if you do that, your depreciation skyrockets, but your EBITDA earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization is amazing. And that's what they show to investor, pumping the growth story. But the underlying truth is that there are no earnings. They are gro just growing, growing by burning money. That is 500 million euros, which is more than revenues in this case. So I'm very, very worried about their expansion in Spain. Of course, gym in the Netherlands is always raining and you better do something in the gym. But in Spain, we have Ibiza partying. Why would we go into gyms where we can train outside? So I don't know whether the business model will work there too. Let me know, you guys, if you are from California or from North Dakota, whether the gym trends are different, also from Europe, let me know in the comments below. Then we have another stock to short, Oatly, the company that makes those great products, actually great oat milk for cappuccinos, but the market capitalization is 11.6 billion. 11.06 billion on 447 million on revenue. That's what, 25 on revenue and they say that they have a 600 billion market to address which is insanity because if i just look at the global oats market size it is at 5.18 billion so if i had 5.18 billion i could buy 45 percent of oatly or i could buy every oat produced in a year in the whole world and then tell Oatly to give me 70% of the company. If not, I would not give them any oat to make their product. So with 5 billion, I could corner them. But of course, every oat in this world is worth 5 billion. Oatly, a company that makes milk from oat, is worth 11 billion on 25 times sales on huge growth projections. And if you look at the aisle there, it's a great product, but there is so much competition with it that margins will be just milk margins over the next few years. And I'm sure there will become new competitors there. So the market is insane pricing this. And then there is also accounting because the Tood Chef was forced to change the accounting of the transport of the goods from administrative to cost of goods sold, which crashed margins 50%. Oatly 
is still ho holding the shipping costs into general and administrative costs, which makes the margins look great with a little bit of accounting and audit, they will have to change it to, to show the real margins that will be thin, then you can grow whatever you want, you will never make any money. So we have fake business model or questionable business model and you have a nice report on Spruce Point on going short the company, so you can read that online, but for me, this is again a risky business model. So, risky business model usually means that stocks will go down. And if you just check a few videos that I made in similar fashion, we have very good food stock analysis that we made eight months ago. And the stock went a little bit up, but since then the business model issues came out and the stock has been going down, down and down. I also made a NEO stock analysis, I think it was around 55, 60, and I was pretty correct there as the stock has been declining. Plus, I made an analysis of other ARK stocks in February of this year where I said and many of these stocks are going to go down like this. So we now have similar situation with the free stocks that I just discussed and will I go short? That's the question. Well, no. And I want to explain why. Because as John Maynard Keynes says, the market can stay rational longer than you can stay solvent. The risk and reward of going short is simply not in my favor. I don't like those odds. And that's why I will not go short now. I might go short sometimes in the future. And that's a tool everyone should have in his investment portfolio arsenal because you never know and that's why also I'm making this video because going short strategy especially always being short involves a lot of ego someone with a big ego is David Einhorn from Greenlight and he has been going short Tesla over and over and over again not because it was a rational thing to do but just because he has a big ego, I think. Because, of course, he got burned, 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 burned. He burned a lot of money because of ego reasons. And going short all the time involves a lot of ego and is extremely costly. However, one guy that went short just once in his life is Sir John Templeton. He went short in 2000, he looked at the market, he looked at those dot-com stocks and he went short each one of them 11 days before the lock expiration. And then when the IPO insiders were allowed to sell those shares, of course, those shares went down. So there is opportunity if you really know what you're doing and you're carefully assessing the risk and reward. But this doesn't mean going short all the time. All the shorts that go short all the time lose their shorts. And if you want to have the shorting tool in your investing arsenal, use it like Templeton, where you are absolutely sure on the supply of stocks. If more stocks will be sold than bought on the market, the stock will go down. That's something you have to be sure of when it comes to shorting. If a Reddit crowd goes on and buys those short, stocks will go up. So supply and demand for stocks is key. And you have to structure it in a way so that if things go wrong, you are okay. Seth Klarman went short the Japanese stock market in 1989 because doing so, buying options, was extremely cheap. He was happy with losing everything for the upside. And if I would ever go short, it would again be likely through options, but that's something we'll discuss in a new educational video somewhere down the road. So please subscribe to this channel for that and also check my stock market investing course that's absolutely free that has a lot of content like this there. So if you are into learning about investing, subscribe there too. So 
options another time. Be sure never to make it an ego game, but just go for it when you are absolutely sure or you can structure a bet in a way that it doesn't hit you. And think of the maximum cost of going short, which is then again about structuring risk and reward. Because the most important thing is not to lose your shorts or having Elon Musk send you these sexy shorts that he produced and sold to all the short sellers out there. I hope you liked this video, enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different from the value investing that we usually do, but I thought it would be a nice educational video for a lot of you to think about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.